<laughs> hey, Sadie, are you going with us to the Dare to Believe Museum this afternoon? Katie, keep it down. Huh, I don't know. How long will it take? Going where? Uh, nowhere. That was just my little sister talking. I think they said something about the Believe It or Not Museum. Isn't that the museum that has fairy tales in it like Noah's Ark? I heard about that from my grandmother. Oh yeah, so Trent, you don't really believe in those fairy tales now, do you? Yeah, fairy tales. Oh yes, that's the place, but they aren't fairy tales. Yeah, I actually heard they have some pretty awesome dinosaur models inside. I was thinking of checking it out against the science of evolution. That is, if we're all still going. Yeah, Trent. Are you still going? Well, I have to go. I've got to get the pictures of some real dinosaur fossil eggs for an article my sister's writing. Why don't we all go? I believe I have better things to do with my time than to spend it in a place for little kids. You know, Garrett, you might just learn something if you went with us. Why don't you just check it out, Garrett? You might just find out this place is for real. I don't know. Hmm. How about bringing me back some contraband? Which band? You know, smuggle something out of the museum. What did you have in mind? What about sneaking out some dinosaur eggs? Great ideas, Sandy. That's Sadie. Right, Sadie. You bring me back some of those dinosaur eggs, and I'll buy tickets for the whole group to go. But if you don't, well, we'll know all that church stuff is for babies. Thanks a lot, Katie. Now what's Garrett gonna think about me? Why do you have to embarrass me? Well, I'm sorry. I did know that mentioning our church to the museum would embarrass you so. You need a man up. Trent, dude, I was kind of surprised you myself. You should have talked different than that at church. Would the real Trent please stand up? You go to church, Trent? I didn't guess that about you. No worries, I'm an open kind of guy, accepting all points of view. Whatever, let's get going. I don't have all day. Hey, wait for me.
Looks like we're too late. It says the muse museum will be closing in less than 30 minutes. Guess we'll have to come back some other time. Wait a minute. It says in here that if we come after 5 o'clock, we can get in for free. Let's check it out real quick. Maybe I can get enough pictures before they kick us out. Then I won't have to come back. Whoa, look at this place. Hmm, says that Rexy here is only 6,000 years old? Well, that can't be right. In science class, we learned that the last dinosaurs died out 35 million years ago. Maybe not. I mean, it doesn't make sense if you believe that God created animals and man on the sixth day. Hey guys, keep it down. There's a group in here with the teacher. Let's see what they're all saying. So girls, as we saw, God created the dinosaurs about 6,000 years ago, and then he put them on the ark with Noah. So contrary to the belief that men and dinosaurs didn't exist at the same time, the Bible tells us that we actually did exist together for a couple of thousand years before we judged the world with the great flood. Yes, Brittany. Mr. Black, one of my friends says that everything in the world evolved. He says that scientists know this for a fact. If scientists are so sure, then why shouldn't we believe them? <clears throat> well, Brittany, to start with, evolution ignores one very important scientific law. That's life cannot come from non-life. Also, all logic tells us that if you have nothing, nothing will happen. So it goes against all logic and all rules of science to think that the universe is a creation of nothing. It's, it's similar to having an empty bank account and just sitting back and hoping it turns into millions of dollars all by itself. Now, the theory that everything came into existence all on its own is just absurd. Excuse me, are you guys with our class? Uh, no, we were just listening to your talk. Oh, well, I'm Dallas Black. I'm a science teacher at a local school here in town. We're just about finished up with our tour. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you. Thank you, Mr. Black, but we have another room to visit. Okay. Sorry about that, guys, but we really need to get those fish. And we don't have much time to find those eggs. Hey, guys, I think this might be the dinosaur room. But the only way there is to go is through all these other rooms. Let's get started. Well, I guess we go in here for starters. It's so dark in there. Shh, let's just go and sit down. Welcome to the Dare to Believe Museum's 4D Theater. We will begin with Apollo 8's 19 Christmas Christmas Eve 1968 transmission as they orbit the moon for the first time in history. We hope you enjoy this production. We are uh, now approaching uh, lunar sunrise, and uh, for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. <laughs> and God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called these seas. And God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, 
and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. It's incredible to think about God being our creator. I feel so small and yet important and special at the same time. Hey guys, I don't know if this is a special moment and all, but we are in a bit of a time crunch here. Yeah, the museum is about to close. Well, the map says we keep going around here to the Noah's Ark room. Noah's Ark? Seriously? Okay, now I'm starting to believe this place is about fairy tales. So the original had that pitch caulking, and we're going to use some more modern caulking in this remake of the Ark. Uh, I think it's going to be more waterproof. We had a few leaks in the old one, but this is a whole lot better. Wow, yes, indeed. I love it. Aww, look at the cute tiny. And who might you be right here at closing time? I know it's late to be here, but we'd really like to get through as much of the museum as we can before the museum closes. You must be Noah. Indeed I am. 
And this is my dinosaur friend from the Ark named Scales. Seriously? Okay, I'll play along. I think we have a skeptic. Let's just take this from the beginning, and Scales and I will give you the short version of our history together. Long, long ago, God looked at the world and his heart grew weary and sad. For the people he'd made, and they all turned out bad. Somehow I found grace and favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now it's a very long story, so I'm going to try to keep it short. God told me how to build a big boat that would keep my family safe. So I built that ark, got it all finished before it started to rain. And we took two of every creature, and the ark was all filled. Did you take any dinosaurs? Oh, yes, indeed we did. Well, it rained and rained 40 days and nights. The flood was terrible. None survived, except for two of each kind kept snug and safe inside. Then the sun came out and the earth was dried and all the animals came back outside to start a new life. To multiply. Well, things had changed down here on the ground. There weren't enough groceries to go around. Men became hunters. Why, dinosaurs even ate each other. Disease, danger, and that's how the dinosaurs became mostly extinct. kind of a tight schedule, so we're going to have to leave you with it. I hope you enjoy your tour. Right. Bye! I remember the boat and all those animals when I was really little, but that wasn't really true, was it? Of course it was true. God said it was true. It's in his word. That helps explain what happened to the dinosaurs. What do you mean? There were no dinosaurs around with man. Science tells us that dinosaurs died out before man even evolved. Well, obviously not, since man and dinosaurs were both created on the sixth day. And dinosaurs are obviously land animals. Hello? When the ark finally landed, the earth was barren and desolate. There was no food for the dinosaurs to eat because there were plant eaters then. Noah had no time to plant anything, so I guess he and his sons just went hunting. All the wild animals, large and small, and all the birds and fish will be afraid of you. I have placed them in your power. Every, I, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Hmm. Never thought of it that way before. I just assumed since they had such big, sharp, gnarly teeth, they were carnivorous, something to ponder. Aw, 
for scales. I trust scientists. They can't be that wrong. Besides, they wouldn't let the schools teach us this for years if it weren't so. I believe this Bible is just a bunch of stories someone made up. Yeah, fairy tales, like Garrett says. The Bible is a book of science. God created science. The Bible does not contradict science, it proves it. You are right, Barry. truth of Jesus unafraid. I hold my head, I trust in you. stars called 47 Tuck.
Sounds like God has his own personal string section. Hey Trent, hit your button. Let's hear them all together. working on it, Amy. What is this place? It's full of tiny babies. Look at this picture. It looks like it's sucking its thumb. That is a seven-week-old baby in its mother's womb. By seven weeks, they can suck their thumbs, their hearts are beating, and brain waves can be detected. 
they can really do all that? I just thought, well, they weren't really alive yet. Wait, who are you? I guess I could ask you the same question, since it's past closing time and you shouldn't be here. Oh, sorry, I guess we lost track of time. Well, guys, I guess we'd better get out of here. Wait, I, I guess you can stay. Uh, hold on, wait a minute. You can stay a little while longer. I could give you a quick tour of the rest of the museum, if you'd like. Yes, that would be great! Could you show us where the dinosaur eggs are? <laughs> Back to your question. Many people are led to believe that young babies are just tissue. But in reality, they are a person from day one. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. He has known me for a long time. God loved me before my mom and dad even knew I was coming. That's so cool he cared about me before I was born. I like babies. <laughs> Here is an ape and a man side by side. They don't really look alike, but that's because one is fully ape and one is fully man. They seem to have left out all the evolutionary changes that had to have happened in between them. Well, Jonathan, our science book says that missing links exist, but nobody's ever found one. Don't you think that's a little strange? Maybe, but I've seen them in other museums. Yes, I know. What they don't tell you is they may have found a tiny piece of skull or a toe and not anything like a real body. They create a whole body to go around that tiny piece of bone and fashion it to fit their theory. I don't know. They surely do look real. Maybe theirs are real. Did you know that we have the same exact evidence that they do? It actually fits with the Bible perfectly. And we didn't have to make it up. God told us in Genesis 126, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. I really don't think Jesus looked like an ape. Oh gosh, well, he's certainly not. If apes evolved into man, then why do we still have apes? I can answer that. I was at the Frank McClung Museum at the University of Tennessee, and I memorized their answer to that frequently asked question. Man did not evolve from present day apes. Humans and apes share a common ancestor who lived millions of years ago. The development of humans and apes since then has been entirely separate. Think of our relationship with the apes as distant cousins who have the same great, 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 great grandparent. That sounds <laughs> really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does have a few holes in it, scientifically yeah. speaking. Yeah, like Swiss cheese. <laughs> God made me to be like him? Yes, Elise, you hit the nail on the head. You have a special place deep down inside of you made just for God. Until he lives there, you will feel an emptiness. Animals don't have that place that needs filling. Apes don't have that special place for God to live. We were made in God's image, not an ape's image. Exactly. <laughs> Not trying to be rude, 
I won't cop an attitude But I've seen your evidence And still I'm not convinced Gonna need a little proof And here's something you can do To conclude your argument And clean up this whole mess Go find me a monkey To give a testimony Before you try to make a believer out of me Go find me a monkey To give a testimony Before you try to make a believer out of me No matter what you say Well you know I can't be swayed But I'll jump out my seat To see that monkey preach That's right Go on, tell him Before you try to make a believer out of me Go find me a monkey To give a testimony Before you try to make a believer out of me Testimony before you try to make a believer out of me. Watch you find me a monkey. You give a testimony before you try to make a believer out of me. <laughs> monkey, 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 hey, hey. Go find me a monkey, 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 monkey. Go find me a monkey. So, Mr. Mike, you're saying that we are different from the animals because we can know God? That's right, Elise. But why would God want to know me? My dad doesn't even want to know me. He made you and he loves you, Elise. God is your heavenly father. You're not here by accident. God made you on purpose and with a purpose. But I'm not worth loving. You don't know the things I've thought and done. Noah said God punished the earth with a giant flood when everyone was so bad. How do you get past that? That's why Jesus came for us, right, Mr. Mike? That's right, Barry. You see, when Adam and Eve sinned, blood had to be shed to cover their nakedness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Adam was the first man, and God meant for him to live forever with him. When man sinned, he was shut off from God. But God had a plan. You see, he sent his son Jesus to die for you. But I don't understand what that means. I have heard the words all my life, but I've never understood it. Let's see if I can illustrate it better for you. Hmm. Oh yes, let's use this. Let's pretend this black robe is your sin. Let's put that on like that. Okay. All right, here's one, selfishness. Oh yeah, who's not selfish? That's right, let's put that. Okay, how about rebellious? Yep, especially rebellious. Okay, how about jealousy, dishonesty, unkind? I get the picture, put them all on. Okay, so this is me. Not a pretty picture. Now, Elise, take your robe off and put it on the cross. But, but they aren't his sins, they are mine. Exactly. When Jesus died for you, he became guilty 
of your sins as if he had been the one who had done them. His blood on the cross covers your sin as if you had never done them. When you accept God's gift of forgiveness, Jesus' blood covers your sin and makes you white as snow. to cover my sin. I want to give you my life right now. Please come and fill my empty heart. Thank you, God. taking me here today. I have learned a lot more than dinosaur eggs. I have a peace that has filled me. I feel like I belong. I feel sure of the first time of Jesus in my life. When you surrendered your life to him, Elise, he immediately filled that restless hole in your heart. Wow, you know that makes us truly sisters. <laughs> hey, Trent, are, are you okay? Oh, yeah, it, it, well, it, it's just, it, it's like... Take your time. Okay. It, it's like this. I'm a Christian. 
I really do love the Lord. I attend Sunday school and go to youth group, but I'm feeling really ashamed right now. What do you mean? Well, it's like earlier. I was embarrassed for Garrett to even know I was coming here. It's just that Garrett is a somebody and I'm a nobody. And knowing him and hanging out with him would make me feel like a somebody. Or so I thought. And now? Well, now I've been reminded of how great God is and how much he loves me. And that he sent his son Jesus to save me. And yeah, I'm afraid to let anyone know I'm even a Christian. Now I'm really a nobody, even with God. Do you remember what Peter did the night Jesus was arrested? He denied he even knew him, not once, but three times in the matter of a few hours. After Jesus was resurrected, he confronted Peter and asked Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? And Peter answered every time, yes, Lord, you know I do. That means Jesus had already forgiven him. And he'll forgive you too. Trent, you just need to tell God how you're feeling and how much you love him and how sorry you are. Your faith will come alive. Jesus came down from heaven for you and me, giving faith, hope, and freedom, mercy and peace, free to all who
Thanks, Mr. Mike, for a great tour and for reminding me that I was made to serve God. Oops, that's Garrett again. Guess I'll text him back later. I had a great time here. I want to come back and see Scales. He was so cute. <laughs> hey, guys, look what I found. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Oh my Seriously, goodness. the dinosaur is. We must have walked right past them. <laughs> I'll go ahead and get my sister this picture, but boy, have I learned more than that today. Hey, Trent, maybe you could get a copy of these to show Garrett. You know what, Barry? Now I'm thinking it's not so important. Maybe I'll invite him next time to come with us and see the eggs for himself. I can't wait to get back to the youth group and share everything we've seen and learned today. I'm so excited. Youth group, when do you guys meet? Sunday afternoons at 4.30. You want to come? Well, I'll think about it, because, you know, I'm an open kind of guy, accepting all points of view.